the word terrorist got to the point where it became a a, a go to card to dismiss your entire humanity. You are now watching AK Debris on YouTube. Make sure to click the like button, smash the subscribe button, and leave a comment for the algorithm. Before we get into it, man, let me tell you something. The word terrorist, we will stop using it today and now because it's been misused like a motherfucker. And <clears throat> I'm going to tell you why I get so pissed off at that word. That word, my friend, let me tell you something. The idea of a terrorist that we know today as what it is, you know, the ISIS, the 9-11 people. Let me tell you something about it. Look back in history and see where it started. This idea of Islamic militant groups. Because we associate it with Islam, right? Cool. This Muslim boogeyman that scares everybody today was created by your favorites, you know, the USA. It's not no conspiracy. I mean, let's remember here, the people we are fighting today, we funded 20 years ago. And we did it because we were locked in this struggle with the Soviet Union. They invaded Afghanistan, and we did not want to see them control Central Asia. And we went to work. And it was President Reagan, in partnership with the Congress, um, led by Democrats, who said, you know what, sounds like a pretty good idea. Let's deal with the ISI and the Pakistani military, and let's go recruit these Mujahideen, and let's great, let's get some to come from Saudi Arabia and other places, importing their Wahhabi brand of Islam, so that we can go beat the Soviet Union. I'll tell you guys a fact before I do it. I grew up in Saudi Arabia. There's no freedom of speech over there. And questioning too much alone will get you in trouble. And, you know, I, I'm born in 97, so I was like a teenager-ish kid. But I remember this, seeing it multiple times, many times. And I never, you know, it never registered in my head till I left Arabia and, and, and dug in and got to ask and look and research. There was a building called <clears throat> the Jihadi Training Center. The Jihadi Training Center. It was just a, it was a building. It was just like any building. Jihadi Training Center, okay. It was closed. It looked like it was, you know, nobody's there. It's like one of them old government buildings. You record it, right? Jihadi Training Center. Hmm. During them years, I was too young to understand what was even a jihadi train. What is he training for? What is a jihad? None of that. I knew of 9-11. And again, you can tell by my English and my music. I'm westernized. I didn't care. I really didn't like my people. Okay. So, I didn't question much. Come to find out later in life that Osama bin Laden, the guy who you know did 9-11 allegedly, and he did it from a cave <laughs> in Afghanistan, I found out that he's from where I'm from, Arabia. Not only that, I did a whole video about him, which got demonetized just for having his name. <laughs> Osama bin Laden, is the son of a multi-millionaire. He was, before he went out in the caves, he was riding Lambo, skr, skr, Corvette, Corvette. <laughs> he had, a, yeah, he had that type of money. He studied in the U.S., so he liked the U.S. Who radicalized boy? What happened to Osama that's in college. Yo, what's up, bro? Want a party? Well, how did he go from this to caveman 9-11 planning? Well, <clears throat> if you try to ask in Arabia, 
you know what's up. But in the West, where you have freedom of speech, are you a terrorist sympathizer? Hmm? What do you want to know? Who cares? He's a terrorist. Don't feel bad for him. Ah. But look, I dug in. The year 1979. Afghanistan. They were chilling. Arabia. They were chilling. They were friends with the U.S. I mean, just sleepy, ruined it, but they were allies, always been. And the Soviet Union at the time, before it became Russia, it was the Soviet Union. They invade Afghanistan. America's looking at it just like Russia and Ukraine today. Okay, it's like 50 Cent and Ja Rule. They beef him for 30 years. So, here come the CIA and the American people, or whoever at the time. And they call on Arabia and they be telling me, yo, look, Arabia, if you did not already know, it is the land of Prophet Muhammad, where uh, so it's where people come, it's where Mecca is. So it has this respect and holiness, and it is a holy land. But the government is not holy at all. The Saudi government always used Islam and this holy land shit in their favor for control, okay? They kind of ruined Islam in a way, but I'll get to a different video. But for now, listen, understand this. America needs help. They go on TV, on the radio, and the, like banners, I don't know what the billboards. And during that time, it was marketed and promoted to the Saudi public uh, in a way to trigger their emotions. I'll explain. You see how today Israel is promoting to their people. You see these terrorists. Look what they did to us. They hate us. Let's go get them. Uh -huh. Same thing. But mind you, there was no terror. They were just showing the people that look at your Muslim brothers in Afghanistan getting done dirty. By who? By the evil, evil Soviets. It is your duty as a Muslim to go and help them out. And you'll be a hero. Mind you, this was helping who? America, the BFF, right? So all of this would not exist if it wasn't for America. You follow me? Cool. So they convinced the youth. You know, the youth, are, when you're young, young man, you're more ready for war. They did that to our brothers. I gotta go save my brothers. But Osama, you're a millionaire. Money doesn't matter when my brother is struggling. That's kind of how I felt last week. But anyway, I'm just trying to tell you a story. So Osama, among a bunch of people, not to mention the, 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 besides that promotion, two other factors. If you went out there, <clears throat> You were marketed, it's like uh, you were made a hero by the government and the people. So like, so like the chicks, for example, you know, everybody want to get a chick, right? Huh? Nowadays, what, you got to have six figures and six feet tall or whatever? <laughs> whatever they be saying. Back then, it was like, oh, I want, I want a guy who's brave, who go and help. Oh, yeah, I'm going jihad for my brothers. Oh, that's hot. You go on the billboards, you see them. Shout out to our heroes. And they had a saying, A country we don't protect, we don't deserve to live in. And then the pictures and the music. Oh, our heroes. So, as far as anybody concerned, including America, you're a hero. You're going out there to do heroic work. You're brave. You're respected. America, at the time, 
gave you the weapons needed and the training to fight off the evil Soviets. And the religious scholars, who very influential, I would, until MBS, they, of course, gave the cosign a stamp. They said, yeah, of course. If, if you go in there and help your brothers, and you defend Islam, huh? and you pass away in a battlefield, you don't go to hell, you go straight to heaven. Matter of fact, when you get to heaven, there's going to be like 76 virgins waiting on you. Like, daddy. <laughs> you talk, you're talking about Arabia before they let men and women mingle, so everybody's already horny. 76 virgins. <laughs> Let's go right now. And they went. You see how Israel, they told them, have fun. Palestinian lives don't matter. You got the green card, no red li lines, as he said. They told them people the same thing because it was to fight the Soviets. But in June, to get them to that point, you put in all these ideas in their head and they're heroic and they're fighting for God and this is not about money. Like, you made a millionaire leave his millionaire life behind. Think about the psychological uh, type of thinking he had like this. He left the life of luxury to live in a cave because he believed it's for a good, greater cause, right? He went there and I don't know if you think war is like Call of Duty or you think it's like Israel sitting in a plane. Yeah, war is ugly traumatized people you make friends along the way that you see them die explode boom bow it's a lot of trauma and think about the mentality of these people to add to that when the job was done america's like oh that sucks buddy tell for like everybody abandoned them and they pointed all the dirt that they did on them a lot of them came back before before the dirt got pinned, but a lot of them fell into the rabbit hole in the deep end of this cause. That they, the same people call them bad, put it in their heads. Let's get some to come from Saudi Arabia and other places importing their Wahhabi brand of Islam so that we can go beat the Soviet Union. And we, guess what? They retreated. They lost billions of dollars, and it led to the collapse of the Soviet Union. So there's a a very strong argument, which is, wasn't a bad investment to end the Soviet Union, but let's be careful what we sow, because we will harvest. So we then left Pakistan. We said, okay, fine, you deal with the stingers that we've left all over your country. You deal with the mines that are along the border. And by the way, we don't want to have anything to do with you. In fact, we're sanctioning you. So we stopped dealing with the Pakistani military and with ISI, and we now are making up for a lot of lost time. So this is an incredibly difficult set of issues that are all interconnected. So people like Osama, they found, they found themselves from, gone from respected heroes and the heroes and are we are proud of you to most wanted fugitives sitting in the country, basically no government, this war torn. They're the pretty, you know, like they sent them. It's like I send you to go hit somebody. Hey, yo, here's five bands, go hit bro. You go and hit bro, and boom, bro calls the cops on you and you get arrested, da da da. And you say, but AK, you said you're going to come save me. I said, hmm, I don't know you. He's a criminal. That's what happened. But again, these people who are so married to the cause, we don't even know if 9-11, there's things about the victims and the, the findings. Not my saying, the courts. But <sighs> that's when and how the modern day idea of a terrorist began. So when they tell you Hamas equal ISIS, <laughs> ISIS, my friend, was the remainings of Al-Qaeda. 
which got scattered and dispersed all over the, uh, the globe. Uh, they continued jihad in different avenues and different places. But after what happened in Syria, again, ISIS, you guys are ISIS, ISIS, listen to me. Syria had a dictator who is put there by Israel. I'll get to it in the next video. This motherfucker that Israel planted on these people, I just want to show you the type of people we're dealing with. He dropped chemical weapons on his own people for going and protesting against them. Yep. Chemical weapons. Illegal. On his own people. You think that's crazy? You know what's crazy? Israel put him there, and he is still in power to this very day. And I give you even crazier. He is beginning to normalize relationships again with people. Like, hey, yeah, I drive chemical weapons. I would show you guys a video of some horrific graphic stuff that, would, that he did to people. And he's still in power. 2023, November 3rd. Israel put him there, and it's proven. But if had he not, like when you go protest, and people drop chemical weapons on you, and the situation get ugly, like you cannot blame people if they go and form militias, and then here come foreign powers, I back you, I back you? What do you expect? It created a little vacuum where the remains of Al-Qaeda, which you created, America, Israel, right? Let's not forget. They come here. They, they use this vacuum. They collaborate. They form this barbaric state. These are people fucked in the head from things you made happen. They were born normal people like me and you. If you didn't exist, they wouldn't exist. So let's stop the bullshit. They go and form this Islamic State or ISIS, whatever. They enforce it with the violence that they did. They, you know the story. But again, these were the remainings of Al-Qaeda. They came, they took advantage of this shit. Right? Bashar al-Assad still here in power. Same guy who dropped chemical weapons on his own people. Thanks to Israel. So when they throw in this term around terrorist, 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 my whole life, I don't have a gun. Do you see a gun here? I got to go around and be called names and terrorists and stereotypes and stuff. I don't know these people. You blaming me for something you did? The problem is this, my brother. The word terrorist got to the point where it became a, a, a go-to card to dismiss your entire humanity. Yeah, we should just kill him. How can you feel bad for him? It's terrorist. Let's say they were terrorists. You're going to kill his mama? Is the baby in the incubator Hamas? I get comments from grown men. It's like, with the little girl and the devil. They shouldn't have supported Hamas. Are you fucking stupid? Did the baby in the incubator support Hamas? Did the, did the grandma support Hamas? All I've seen... Show me one dead terrorist that you have. Bring his body like this. None. You're just killing people, 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 innocent people. Always innocent, unarmed, innocent, unarmed. That's what you do. But... You know, we can point fingers at the Pakistanis, which is, you know, I did some yesterday, frankly. And it's merited because we're wondering why they don't just get out there and deal with these people. But the problems we face now, to some extent, we have to take responsibility for having contributed to. You are now watching AK Debris on YouTube.